Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Can't really say the same about my plant right here. Such a very here has seen better days. I just got back from a trip. I've been out of town, came home, plants are thirsty and trying to catch up on things. First on the list of things to do is repot anything that desperately needs it. Chivarias are fun plants. Lots of people grow them. Had this one for a while. Figure I'd bring y'all along for the fun of the repot and just talk about what's going on here. But what happened? There actually isn't all that much to it. The plant just needs to be repotted. Every now and then, after we've had plants in the same container for a while, it becomes difficult to water them and then they dehydrate very easily. And that's when I know it's time to repot the plant. I've had this soaking for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and that's really as long as I'm comfortable with soaking a plant, or about as long as I feel comfortable with soaking a succulent anyways. Rule of thumb, I always go by with plants is when in doubt, hydrate. Before you do anything else, if there's something wrong with the plant, is make sure that it's hydrated. Maybe first check to make sure you haven't been overwatering the plant, right? But once you've established that the plant's thirsty, water it, and then move on to whatever else the plant needs. It's not looking terrible. It's just become a pain to water. All in all, this is actually a very nice looking Echeveria. You can see how it has started to spread out as Echeverias will do. They have that beautiful rosette shape and they put out lots of little pups that spread out further and further and further, just like a Semper Vivum would do a hen and chick. I could keep growing it this way, but it seems counterproductive. If you have an Echeveria in a wide enough planter, then all of these offshoots that come off of the plant, as long as they're in contact with some soil, then they will root. You can even see there are some roots hanging out down there. This plant has wanted to grab onto some soil and get to spreading. Echeverias look really cool when you get them into a container and they can start to form a nice dense mat. That's when Echeverias start to shine, in my opinion, is when they start to get mature and put out lots of pups and start to spread. So I figured, put these into a container where all these offshoots here can set their roots down and continue to spread. I think the plant would look a lot better that way. Here I just have an all-purpose potting mix, one that drains fairly well. It's not one that's made specifically for cactus and succulents, so I'm going to add some, it's just aeroid mix. Not necessarily the best thing to use for a succulent, but Echeverias tend to be more sturdy. I'm also adding in a good amount of gravel and sand just to help with the drainage even more. There is succulent, so being aware of the risk of root rot, making sure the soil drains really well, all that stuff is very important. So using a potting mix that's made specifically for cactus and succulents is not a bad idea if that's what you prefer to do. For me, it's just easier to mix up something on my own that will drain well. The bark chips and things will retain some moisture, but the gravel and sand that's in here should help counteract that and allow for more drainage. And this is a more of a flat, thin-leaved Echeveria. I don't know the name, it was just an assorted Echeveria. I thought it was a Pearl von Nuremberg, but it's way too small for that to be what it is. Echeverias that have a more thick, more succulent leaf on them, just from my experience, I've noticed that those tend to be the ones that are much more prone to having issues with root rot. Whereas Echeverias like this one right here, they tend to be just a smidge bit more tolerant of extra hydration. Regardless of which type you're growing, it's best to not let water settle in the center and to make sure that you allow them to dry in between waterings. They're very simple plants, sometimes called sturdy and foolproof. I don't know if I'd go that far with it just based on the number of questions that I answer for people who are having struggles with their succulents, but the struggles are usually always due to the plant being overwatered. Really fun, sturdy plants. They're a plant where if you put them into a mix that does drain really, really well, you can go ahead and water them when the top just couple of inches of soil dries out as long as they're getting a good amount of light, probably a minimum of six hours a day of indirect bright light, as well as warmth. Average household conditions don't really lend themselves to those things. That's why it's generally best to just let them dry out completely in between watering, waterings. Some succulents like the, what, Grapidocetums, those are one that I have noticed if I just barely overwater those, they throw an absolute fit and rot out very, very easily. The Echeverias, I don't usually have that issue with. Generally, if you just go ahead and dry them out and give them some light, they do okay. With the growth that you can see on here, that's all coming up and sticking up really high. I have options with those. I could just clean them up and pin them down when I get them into the container, if the container is large enough. Otherwise, just cut those off, trim the lower leaves off, leave like an inch or so of stem, let it dry for about a week, something like that and just poke them down in the soil, they'll take root. Very fun, very easy. I'm going to just use my fingers to clean all this stuff out 
from down below. I can see there are some roots along that stem, which is really great because that speeds things up as far as the <laughs> transplanting process goes. Some of these leaves don't need to come off. I'm just taking them off for ease of propagation since they're a limp. They don't seem to want to rehydrate. All right, I'd say it's looking pretty good. That's a lot of stuff that came off of there. I haven't messed with this plant really much since last spring. It's just been hanging out on my grow shelves. So it's had some neglect. I've still been making sure it's been watered, but I haven't clearly been taking the time to clean up old stems, anything of the sorts. As they start to extend, the lower leaves aren't getting the kind of light that they need for the plant to really flourish. And that's why I prefer to keep my edge of areas in a wider pot than a taller pot like the one that this came in. So here's where things come into play about the various options with those wonky growths that the plant has on it. I could go ahead and cut those off and do what I talked about. Leave a little bit of stem on there maybe a couple of inches, let that root out, plop them back down. Just dig this out some more seconds, sit down further into the container. If the container were more wide, then what I would do with this would be to go ahead and pull that down and use a staple to pin it so that this could continue to grow. But this is need a very large container for that. And that's something that I think would be best to do in the springtime because the springtime is generally the best time of year to repot an Echeveria. That's when they start to put on some growth and get moving. And when things warm up during the summertime, hope we get to see some flowers on them. See like this one right here, those roots are still done in there. So I'm just going to make sure that that lays flat within the soil. It can do its thing and hopefully it'll put up more rosettes the other direction. And then with this one, I'm gonna cut that back down at the soil line. And then cut that and pull some leaves, pull some more leaves, something like that. That should be good. This already has some roots on it, so I could leave it to dry, but I probably won't. Since it already has roots on it, I'm just going to say forget it and put it back in there. I'm also growing things in a grow space where things are fairly warm. It's not like I'm indoors and it's only 70 degrees. That definitely does change things, right? So it's off to a good start. So it's looking pretty good. Get some water in there. Make sure that all that soil is evenly moist. And that's pretty much done. Yeah, I'd say that looks better. There's a lot more space in between the plants. So it's gonna be much easier to water moving forward. These should go ahead and plump back up. These limp ones in the back, it was just pretty thirsty. I was only gone for just under a week. Apparently things got pretty dry in here. Oh, we can just pretend a week has passed and that has calloused up and you just poke that down to the soil. That's how that would go. I'm just doing it right into the soil. It's a fresh mix. It's pretty sterile and there are already some roots on there. So I think that that should be fine. One thing I did do with this was make sure to plant it fairly low into the container so that the bottoms of those stems, like I showed earlier where those roots are, are all in contact with the soil. That way those roots can finish doing their thing and these can all establish off into their very own plants and start to fill in. These two over here, I should probably cut those and pop them back into place. Since they're extending out of the soil, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them, get them out of there because those parts of the plants, those aren't going to continue to root from this point on and keep growing out from right here. Oh, I don't, does that make sense? I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. It's not that hard to explain. If I want each rosette to start offshooting, then those rosettes need to be somewhere in the soil, right? Yeah, and then again, just pretend that these have calloused over. All I would do is poke a hole for them just get down in there, make sure there's a space for the stem to go, get it down in there, and then gently push that soil back around the plant. And that's it, that's all there is to it. That's all, I think that that's looking much better. It does still have some rehydrating to do. I think by tomorrow that's going to be looking much, much better. All of these leaves that I pulled out from here, the ones that are really limp and flaccid, those are no good for rooting, but you can take ones that, as long as they're hydrated, all the ones I pulled off are shriveled. You can see like even that it looks pretty good but it has wrinkles in it so that's not something I would use to start more plants. So it's nice healthy leaves you can pluck those off and just set them on top of some vermiculite or some soil. Anything that has a slight amount of moisture to it and the plant should put out roots and develop a new plant. It takes a while for them to go from being a leaf to being a larger more established plant like these. It takes some patience. Overall it's a pretty fun thing to do if you just want to have a whole bunch of areas around. But for what I needed to do this is just fine. Just need to get it to a container that was larger, more shallow. That way the plant will be much easier to water because it had gotten to a point that it was hard to get water into the soil without getting water all over the rosettes. I really avoid getting water in those rosettes just to avoid rot. I would say that this is definitely an improvement. Ideally, I would be moving this into a container that's larger than this. I'd like for it to be a smidge shallower just by like, I don't know, inch or two. And then a good 
six inches wider on each side. I would like to just have these in a dish. But this is good for now. This will get them through until the springtime. A better time for moving a succulent into a container that has a lot of extra soil, because the point is I want them to grow vigorously and spread across the soil to form a nice dense mat of echeverias. That's not really likely to happen this time of year. It's November, moving into December. Even though they're under grow lights, they're still near windows. The echeverias always seem to just know when it's time to chill. And they're right about there. They're ready to go ahead and just relax for the winter time. They'll do some growing this winter because again, I'm in an artificial environment where things are fairly warm and they're under grow lights, but there's just something different about having the plants outside where they'll be experiencing more temperature swings and changes in the day lengths. That's a big one too, as far as getting them to realize, oh, it's spring, it's time to start moving. That's when it'd be more appropriate to go ahead and put them into a container that has all that extra soil. We wanna avoid having too much excess soil succulents, right? Because the extra soil holds on to moisture for a long time and then you may have some problems with the roots rotting out. Don't want that to happen. Okay, that's all. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your garden, some of your favorite succulents, you have favorite types of echeverias. There's some really cool ones out there. Any tips and tricks that I didn't talk about? I didn't really have a game plan for this video. I was just like, hey, I'm gonna repot a plant. We can talk about all the reasons it needs to be repotted. What's been going right, what's been going wrong, all that fun stuff. I'll keep everybody posted in the video, the vlog that comes out after this one. See how it plumps up when it's, it'll be looking a little bit happier. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.